Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three and a half year old named Kylie and I also have an 18 month old named Mia. So right now it is October, which means that it is officially the fall autumn season. And if you live in a place where you're experiencing the changes of the season, then it's pretty likely that the weather is starting to cool down a little bit. Maybe you're seeing the leaves on the trees all start to change color and things are just starting to feel a little bit more cozy. And if you are a Montessori parent at home or a Montessori homeschool parent like myself, then it's pretty likely that you might be looking for some fall inspired activities to put out on your child's shelves. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to be sharing with you 24 different fall inspired activity ideas that are perfect for your Montessori home. Now, generally speaking, the activity ideas that I'm about to share with you are designed for the Montessori primary child or a preschool aged child between three and six years old. However, they are definitely adaptable for slightly younger children and also for older children as well. So if you do not have a child in the three to six age group right now, do not rule these activities out before you see what they are because I think there are a lot of ways that you can be creative and make it work for your child. All of these activities have already been and field tested by my three and a half year old. I actually put them together as part of her preschool homeschool curriculum that we've been doing for our current unit study, which is fall and Halloween inspired. So I am confident and excited about sharing them with you because I know that she really enjoyed them. And there's a really good mix of activities too that covers all of the different areas of study that you would find in a traditional Montessori preschool setting from sensorial and math to language and cultural studies, as well as art and practical life. All right, so let's jump right into the activities and the first one is called Halloween in Paintings Matching. And for this activity, your child is presented with two sets of cards. One of them has a series of traditional paintings that are all Halloween or autumn themed that you would find from a variety of traditional artists. And then the second set of cards has a small little section of that painting that it needs to be matched to. So this activity is not only good for expanding your child's knowledge of art, but also for helping them hone those really important visual discrimination skills. The next activity is called Grading Autumn Colors. And this is a sensorial activity that is a spin-off of the traditional Montessori Color Box 3. So the child is only working with autumn-inspired colors here. And their task is to place the different colors in order from darkest to lightest shades. And as I said, this is a sensorial activity, so it's helping your child to further develop their chromatic sense, as well as those visual discrimination skills. The next activity is a sand tray. And this is work that you will find in basically every Montessori preschool classroom. It can also be adapted for basically any unit of study just by manipulating the letters that your child is working with. So for this one, we chose to practice the letter P for pumpkin because that has to do with autumn, but you really could switch it up to any letter that your child might be learning how to write. So that could be S for scarecrow or B for bat or F for fall. Basically any letter you want, you can make it work for this activity. And the idea here is that your child is practicing first with the sandpaper letter, practicing those movements with their fingers and gaining that muscle memory. And then as they get better, they're switching over to the sand tray and they're practicing those same motions, which will actually help them later on down the line when they start writing. The next activity is called Fall Go-Togethers, and this is a really fun language activity that really helps your child to develop their conceptual understanding of vocabulary terms that are related to one another in some way. They literally go together. So they're going to be given two sets of cards and one set matches a card in the other set. So for these ones, because they are fall or autumn inspired, you might find things like a pumpkin and a slice of pumpkin pie that clearly go together or a spider and its web. Next up is pumpkin pattern matching and this is a sensorial activity that can be done in two different ways. If you want to take the slightly easier version then all your child needs to look at are the patterns on the pumpkins and then match up all of the corresponding patterns. There should be three for each one but if your child needs another level of challenge then in addition to having them correspond all the patterns together you can also ask them to organize the cards according to the darkness of the color on the pumpkins. So if you look closely there is one that is very dark, one that is kind of a medium middle shade and then obviously one 
one that has no color at all. And so you can have them organize them that way on their work rug as well. So depending on how your child uses this activity, this one can also be a great one for honing those visual discrimination skills as they look for the patterns and perhaps also further refining their chromatic sense as they are looking at the different shades of color. Another activity, this time for the area of math, is pumpkin missing number strips. So in this activity, your child is presented with a series of number sequences that just are printed on pumpkins to add to that fall theme vibe. And they have a little set of pumpkins off to the side that contain the different missing numbers. And your child's challenge is to look at the sequence and be able to not only recognize the numbers, but recognize the correct sequence of the numbers and to be able to find the correct number that is missing to help complete the sequence. Next up is a fall inspired practical life activity that is always a hit, it is pumpkin washing. So for this activity, it can be done in a very small contained way with a tiny pumpkin and a small sponge and a small bowl of water if you want it to, but you can also just take the activity outside and do it with a whole different bunch of sizes of pumpkins and just let the water and the mess get to whatever it needs to be in order for your child to get the most engagement out of this activity. As with most Montessori activities, especially those in the area of practical life, it is about the process and not the product. So don't worry if the pumpkin is not completely squeaky clean at the end. For your child, it's about being able to focus and concentrate and to really engage in those large movements that they're using as they scrub and dry the pumpkins and to move them around. And then also to experience that sequence of events, doing the steps in the right order in order to achieve the end result. And then having that feeling of success and mastery in completing the entire work cycle. Another fun practical life work that can be adapted for nearly any unit of study is pin pricking work. So for this one, the child is using a large push pin to punch holes around a shape, in this case, some Halloween themed shapes. And their goal is to eventually cut the shape out of the paper with the sheer number of holes that they have, no scissors required. So this is something that does take time, especially when they first start learning how to do it. So they may not get it done all in one go, and that is perfectly acceptable. And of course, you always want to make sure that you're supervising your child while they're doing this work because the push pin is obviously very sharp. But this type of work is really excellent for helping to strengthen your child's hand and finger muscles and to refine their fine motor skills for a proper pencil grip later on when they begin writing. Next up is parts of a pumpkin three-part cards. Now this is an activity that covers both the areas of language and science. If you're looking to use it primarily for language reinforcement, then you're likely going to want to use it more as a matching game with the cards in the more traditional way that three-part cards are used. But if you're looking to add that science component to it, then I would highly recommend using these cards in conjunction with an actual pumpkin and spend some time opening up the pumpkin and looking at all the different parts inside with your child and helping them identify the parts on the pumpkin themselves and then matching them up to what they're seeing on the cards. It's a lot more engaging and fun for your child that way and something that I would highly recommend doing while you still have an abundance of fresh pumpkins available for purchase. Next up is the life cycle of a pumpkin which also covers the areas of language and science. So not only is your child learning how a pumpkin grows, but they're also being provided with the scientific language that goes along with the names of each of those different parts of the pumpkin's life cycle. And they're learning to sequence them in order correctly. And depending on where you live, if the season is right, then you could also pair this with an actual science experiment where your child is planting a pumpkin seed and actually watching this process happen in action. Another language activity is beginning sound matching. So for this one, your child is presented with a series of autumn inspired cards or even some objects if you have some, and they are tasked with sounding out each of the words. So spider or pumpkin and listening to that beginning sound. And once they've identified what the beginning sound is, then they move over to their movable alphabet if you have one, or just a series of little laminated cards that have the different letters on them. And they're matching that letter with the beginning sound they hear for each word. So they're going to match the letter P with p pumpkin or the letter S for s spider. Next up is a practical life activity called cutting strips. 
These ones have little bats on them just to go along with the theme of Halloween and autumn, but they could be anything. And the child's task is to use a pair of scissors and trace along the dotted line in the particular pattern that it shows. The strip that you see my daughter working on here comes from a printable set that includes a variety of different types of lines. Some of them are straight, some are zigzag, some are wavy but not quite so squished together, and then these ones have very tight waves on them. So you can really find something that caters to every child's level of skill when it comes to practicing using scissors and cutting. Another pumpkin inspired language activity are the types of pumpkins three part cards. Now this activity can actually be done a couple of different ways depending on whether or not your child is reading yet. In the traditional way, if your child is able to read, then they are learning the names of the different types of pumpkins, they're matching them up based on that knowledge, and they're only using the control card, which has both parts, to check their work at the end. But as you can see here, my daughter, who is not reading yet, is still able to do this activity, just a slightly different variation of it. Instead, she starts with the control card, and then she's able to match the pictures pretty easily based on the visual characteristics that she sees, and then she goes to the label card at the end and she visually compares each label to the different labels she sees on the control cards. And so she's looking at the different letters that she sees and comparing them against one another and looking at what order they're in and deciding if the length of the word looks proper and then she's making her determination of a match based on those things. Mm. First one is no. First one on this one is the A. That's how I can tell not the white one. Mm-hmm. So what say to you? I can only tell that one is not a match. That one is not a match. Okay. That one is a match. So even though this is not true reading yet, these are very important skills that she's going to need later down the line, and so it's excellent practice. The next activity is a classic Montessori activity called dry pouring, and in this case we have made it fall themed by having the child pour dry corn kernels. It is very important during this activity to really try to find a bowl or a cup whatever the child is going to be pouring the kernels into, that makes a very distinct noise because they hone in on that sound as they're pouring and they're really focusing on making sure that every little kernel gets into that little bowl and that nothing spills. And that concentration and that sequence of steps and making sure that it's done correctly all of that is part of the process that's so important for practical life activities. Next up is the pumpkin lacing card. This is just a shape that I've printed out and laminated, but it can also be done on really heavy cardstock or even cardboard if you have some extra cardboard laying around. I just punched holes along the perimeter and gave her a shoelace to practice lacing all the way around the perimeter of the shape with. This is an activity that really helps to refine your child's hand-eye coordination and their fine motor skills, and it's often presented in preschool classrooms as a very beginning introductory activity for all of the different sewing activities that are available. Next up is a sensorial activity called fall versus spring leaf sorting. In this activity, your child is given two different sets of cards, ones that contain all green spring leaves in a variety of different shapes from different types of trees, and then another stack that contains all of their fall colored counterparts. So your child's task is to lay out all of the cards from one set and then match their other half from either the spring or fall pile, depending on what you started with, match the other half to those cards based on all of the visual characteristics that they can see. So the shape of the leaf, the edges of the leaf, anything that they happen to notice to help them make that distinction. Next up is a math activity called pine cone counting. And for this activity, you just need a little basket of pine cones and a set of sandpaper numbers or little number tiles. You can also choose to use a little printed out tree to add a point of interest to the activity for your child. I will link below the one that I've used here. However, it is certainly not a requirement. The whole point of this activity is to help reinforce your child's one-to-one -one correspondence skills and that number recognition. So they're drawing a number card or a number tablet from the pile and they're counting out the correct number of pine cones one at a time onto the tree. The next activity is a practical life activity called pom-pom transfer and sorting. And for this activity, I used a set of really funky little Halloween colored pom-poms that have little spiky 
things coming off of them. So they weren't your normal pom-poms and my daughter was very intrigued by them. So that really helped to engage her in the activity. Um, but what she's doing here is transferring the pom-poms from one container to another with a little tiny pair of wooden bread tongs. So this is something that is helping to refine those hand and finger muscles in preparation for later writing. But you can also take this activity a step further other than just transferring by asking your child to sort them using the tongs, either by color or in this case, because I have a variety of different sizes in the bowl, they can also be sorted by size. So if you are having your child sort the pom-poms either by color or by size, then not only is this practical life work, but it also becomes sensorial work as well. Another great Montessori math activity to try is called Cards and Counters. So for this activity, you're providing your child with a small bowl of counters that are fall or Halloween inspired in some way to go along with the theme. And in this case, I have a little bowl of acrylic acorns and pumpkins and leaves. Ideally, you would want them all to be the same when your child is first starting out, just to limit the number of variables that might distract your child from the task. But in this case, my daughter is very accustomed to doing this activity, and so I didn't feel like it was a distracting factor, and I did allow her to use all of the different ones that were available. So in Cards and Counters, as you can see, the child is drawing a number, or maybe the numbers are already laid out, and they are counting out the correct number of counters to go along with that number. So again, not only is this reinforcing those really important one-to-one -one correspondence skills, but they're also learning to really associate that abstract concept of a number symbol with the actual quantity. So you have the eight sandpaper number in front of you as the symbol. This says eight, and then they're counting out eight of something. They can actually see the quantity of eight and begin to actually associate the two. Next up is a language activity called October Rhyming Riddles. For this activity, the child is presented with a series of picture cards that are all autumn inspired. And when you lay them out, you want to make sure that you tell your child what they are, just so that they're very clear on what the picture is supposed to be of if they're not sure. And then as the adult, you have a set of riddle cards that you're actually reading to your child and they're listening to you and then looking at the pictures that they have to determine which card is the matching rhyming word for the one that you provided to them in the riddle. I rhyme with weed. I am a seed. seed, a little pumpkin seed. And I rhyme with rich. I am a rich. Next up are fall pattern strips. In this activity, your child is given a series of fall themes strips that have different sequences of objects on them. And then the last one is missing. Then your child is also provided with a little pile of the potential options that could fit into that sequence. And your child has to actually examine the pattern and figure out what the next object is supposed to be based on the pattern before it. And this is an activity that really plays to a variety of different skills that your child is going to need as they get further along in their academic journey. Because looking at patterns is something that you are practicing every day as you're reading different words and looking at the patterns of letters and decoding what those letters are saying once they're all put together. In addition to that, in the area of math, being able to sequence things is a very important foundation skill later on for more abstract math skills. As well as in the sensorial area too, as your child is using those visual discrimination skills to analyze the characteristics of the different objects that they're seeing and being able to pick the correct one out of the stack to complete the pattern. The next activity is a types of leaves puzzle. This one can be found online and it's great for not only developing those hand-eye coordination skills for even the youngest of toddlers, uh, but it also is great at reinforcing what the different types of leaves are. So it plays to that area of science as well as, again, more sensorial work for your child because they're having to look at the different shapes of the outlines of the leaves in order to be able to match them to the correct spot on the puzzle. Next up is a perennial favorite practical life activity, which is making cookies. 
So bringing your child into the kitchen is one of the greatest things that you can do in your Montessori home. Children are naturally very engaged by the process of cooking and baking because it is a multi-sensory experience for them. Not only are they able to move their bodies and really refine some of their both fine and gross motor skills as they're doing it, but they're also getting to look and visually inspect. They're getting to feel with their fingers. They're getting to smell the aromas of the different ingredients and the final products and sometimes they're even getting to taste along the way so this is really something that excites them it's something that they naturally want to do and as young children they often want to imitate what they see us doing in the kitchen anyway now many children if you take the time to pre-measure out the ingredients for them are completely capable of doing almost the whole process by themselves with just a little bit of assistance from you here and there on some of the tougher parts that perhaps they don't quite have have the physical skills for yet. But otherwise, if you want to have your child help you measure out the ingredients, you can certainly do that as well if you feel like they're ready for it. And if you really think about it, your child is gaining so many important practical life skills as they engage in this simple task of just making cookies. From measuring out the ingredients, to stirring them together, to making the dough and kneading it, using their fingers for that process, to using a rolling pin to flatten the dough out, and then making sure that they're being very precise about how they're cutting out the cookies with the cookie cutter, and then using some more large gross motor movements to add sprinkles. There are so many opportunities that are going to deeply engage your child and give them a point of interest to focus on, something that will allow them to engage in deep concentration. And often the end product, not only is it tasty, but it's something that they're very, very proud of. So if you've never involved your child in the kitchen with the process of baking before, it's something that I would highly recommend because not only is it really fun for them, but it's also a really easy way to create really special memories with your child around this holiday season. And finally, the coup de gras activity that we have done thus far that my daughter cannot stop talking about and that she wants to do over and over and over again is a practical life activity called pumpkin hammering. For this activity, you need a small bowl of nails, a pumpkin, and a child-sized hammer. Alternatively, you could use jumbo push pins and a wooden mallet if you happen to have one of those on hand at home instead of a real hammer, but there are child-sized real tools like you see here that you can provide your child with to allow them to practice actually using real tools. As far as where to put the nails in the pumpkin, if your child has a certain pattern in mind that they want to try, then that is perfectly fine, but there is no need to tell them to have to do it in any certain way. They can totally just put the nails in wherever and there is nothing wrong with that because again, it's not about the end product, it's about the process. It's about your child learning how to actually use the hammer and to line up the nail and get it into the pumpkin accurately and safely because that's that's the part of the activity that they're going to be the most focused on. That's the part that's going to provide them with the most engagement and that deep concentration that we're hoping to cultivate. Okay, so if you saw any activities in this video today that you were inspired to try at home, then check out the description box below because I put a link down there to my blog post that has all of the activities listed by subject area and all of the activities are linked to all of the resources and the materials that I used to help make them happen. This way, if you're trying to recreate it at home, then you know exactly where to go to get the things you need. And in addition to that, there are even more activities on that blog post that you can check out other than what I showed you in the video today because I haven't done all of them yet. So I'm still planning for some of them for the near future. Some of them are Halloween themed activities. So if you need even more inspiration, then definitely check out the blog post because you are sure to find some there. And if you are interested in learning more about how to do Montessori at home with your children, I also offer a comprehensive e-course that walks you through it step by step. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then I will also leave a link to that in the description box down below for you. And just in case you were new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is actually part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I 
for implementing Montessori at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.